Hey everybody. Today we're talking a little bit about Simpson's Paradox. Simpson's Paradox refers to a situation that arises when you have a trend in an overall population or sample that gets reversed when you break that population or sample down into groups. For instance, it's possible for one athlete to outperform another in every year of their respective careers and yet underperform overall. This is actually a fairly common situation, and over the next couple minutes I want to show you a couple examples of it. So I'm swapping over to R here. I've got some simulated data. You can uh, um, download this data set directly from my GitHub. I will put a link to that down below. If you prefer to pause the video and code this in directly, of course, you're welcome to do that. I've called the data set batting because this is supposed to represent some batting averages for a bunch of different players from a few different groups over um, a time span in the, 19, in the late 1900s. And you can see that we've got 100 observations. We have three groups of players, A, B, and C. We've got the year and the average here for each. So the first thing I want to do is just to get a scatter plot for year and average just overall. You'll see I've used Geome Point to get the scatter plot. I've put a regression line on there with um, a method LM for my Geome Smooth, removing the standard error bar. And I've changed the labels on my plot using the scales label number function because batting averages are typically rounded to the nearest thousandth in um, United States baseball. And then of course I put on a theme minimal which is generally my default. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, there we go. You can see that we have a generally downward trend in this simulated data. Over time, batting averages are going down. Perhaps pitchers are getting a little better. The um, defense is getting a little better. Batters are getting a little worse on average. Who knows what's going on? But in this um, overall population, um, this overall um, group of people, we're seeing the batting averages go down. The next thing I want to do, though, is to copy and paste this. And uh, I want to introduce that group variable. So x is still year, y is still average. But now I'm going to color it by this group variable. And as long as I'm coloring it, I'm going to want to put in a, um, a different color palette. So let's do scale color brewer. And palette is dark too. I always like to be colorblind friendly and accessible when I can. Let's see what that looks like. OK. So now you can see that even though we're looking at exactly the same data, within each of the three groups, A, B, and C, over time, performance is increasing. For instance, in group A, which spans from maybe 1962 to about 1973, the trend is clearly positive. And that's the case in each of these three groups. So what's really going on here? How is this possible? The fundamental characteristic that's causing this reversal of these trends is that there's a downward trend among sort of the centers of the groups. So group C, which, take, which is concentrated towards these later years, is fundamentally lower down in terms of batting average than the other two groups, where it's are concentrated in the earlier years. And if you look at the code I used to simulate this data, you can actually see that. So our norm is taking the number of simulated values that we want, the mean, and the standard deviation. And so my code, for groups A, B, and C is taking increasing average x values, but you'll see that we have decreasing average y values. On the other hand, I've put in a generally upward trend within each of the three groups. That's what that 0.3 times x is doing. So again, the individual groups have means that are going down over time, but overall the population um, trend, I'm sorry, the individual groups have means that are going up over time, but the overall trend is going down. For instance, um, the ball might be getting harder to hit, but these players in these different groups are getting better over time, perhaps through practice. Simpson's paradox is not really a rare thing. I want to show one more example. Um, how about common example, I guess? I just want to show a data set that you've seen before that exhibits, exhibits Simpson's paradox, or that you've likely seen. Um, I want to use the iris data set. And in the iris data set, you will use, uh, how about sepal.width for the x aesthetic and sepal.length for the y aesthetic. We'll do a geom point and we'll do a geom smooth just as before. And just for the purposes of this example, we'll do method equals lm again 
and an SE equals false. So it's not the greatest candidate for a straight linear regression, but we're gonna live with that right now for the purposes of this example. You can see a generally downward trend here, according to the regression line. As sepal widths get larger, sepal lengths tend to get smaller. That's a little bit of a counterintuitive result since um, these are both, in a sense, measures of the size of the iris's sepal. What I'm gonna do next is to copy and paste this and I'll put in a color aesthetic for species. And since I'm doing that, I'm gonna to wanna to put in a colorblind friendly palette. Here we can clearly see that within each of the three groups, we have an upward trend in the data, which is I think what we would expect as the sepals get wider, they also tend to get longer. We have a similar phenomenon going on here as in the batting example, where the um, in this case, setosas tend to have larger sepals here, and um, so they, that group is further to the right in this plot, but the sepals tend to be um, shorter on average, and this creates another example of Simpson's Paradox. Once you're aware of Simpson's Paradox, you'll be surprised at how often you encounter it. Fundamentally, it's a lesson to always consider whether the categorical variables in your set really do have an impact on the quantitative explainer that you're looking at. It frequently occurs when um, the categorical variable really is essential to your model.